Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna introduce you guys to the Mechum, the Mashup Engine Query Monitor. Stay tuned. Okay, the Mechum, right? It's time to release the Mechum. But what is the Mechum? So the Mechum is the Mashup Engine Query Monitor. And so it, it kinda, you know, came from a conversation I had with a customer who wanted to see what queries were coming from, you know, a refresh to an Azure SQL database or a refresh when you click the refresh in the desktop. And so I've actually developed the scripts for two um, deployments of it. One, if you're running Microsoft SQL Server in a VM or on premises somewhere. And then the other scripts I have, if you're running um, an Azure SQL database, I haven't tested this out on managed instances. Maybe I'll have some time and I'll update the script. Just haven't done it. All right. I developed the Mechum to help a cust to help the customer see all the queries that's coming through from Power BI, like a refresh to their SQL database, their Azure SQL database, or when someone clicks refresh. And so the best way, like I was gonna use the profiler because I'm kind of old school, but the profiler doesn't work against Azure SQL database. And so I decided to go down my path of learning extended events finally after all these years. And I remember when I got it working, when I got all this working, I called Adam up and he's like, eh, right? He goes, mm, it's okay, right? But I'm still doing a video because I think it's kind of cool, okay? And so basically you create an extended event and then I've created a table value function that parses out the XML of the extended event and then it visualizes it in Power BI, okay? So instead of all this talking, you guys know all I like to do, what? Let's head over to my laptop. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you want to create a storage account and you create the storage account and inside the storage account, you want to create a container. And so you can see right here, I've created a blob container called extended events, X events, right? So once you do that, then you go to the properties of that um, container and grab your um, primary blob service endpoint. You're gonna need that for later. Just grab that on your clipboard, hang on to it, okay? Once you get that done, then you open up PowerShell. Yep, I have a PowerShell script that is part of the zip file that's gonna be in the comments below, right? And you go to, you see I have three folders here, one for Azure, one for on-premises, and some PBI files, okay? the For this video, I'm walking through the Azure ones. If you're going on-premises, if you're using Microsoft SQL Server installed in the installed in the VM or somewhere on, you know, bare metal or however, you, however people are doing it these days, um, use those scripts. So basically, remember, here's my little asterisk. The Mechum currently only supports SQL Server as a data source. So if you're using Oracle or MySQL or some other relational database, got to figure out how to capture your events and maybe we can modify it up, right? But today, right, I'm only focusing on SQL Server as a data source, okay? So after you do that, go over into the Azure folder, open up this PowerShell script, and what you're going to do is you'll see once you open it, you need to fill in the blank. Fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. And once you run it, it's gonna produce a T-SQL script that um, includes your shared access signature. You need to have that shared access signature because when you cre create the credential, you specify it and it allows the Azure SQL database to you know, write the extended event file over into your storage account, all right, into the container in your storage account. So once you have that, then you open up number two, right? You go back over to the folder and within that folder, you'll see number two, create X event. And so you open that up in Management Studio. And if you, again, in Azure SQL Database, open it up within the context of the database that you want to capture the events on, okay? In my case, it's AdventureWorks 2000, uh, AdventureWorks DW. And so what you'll see is you need to fill in the blanks here. So you fill in your blanks, add your key, right? You need to create the master key. If you, already, if you hadn't created one, you can use UI, new ID as a great option. Um, then you create your credentials. And what you put right here for the path, you'd actually put, let me, let me just type this. You put the, the uh, blob account, right? The endpoint for it, and then the actual folder name, right? So it would look like this. So you would go through here and take this value and put it here, here, here and here and then see this script right here you would take the result of that powershell run and you can actually paste over with what it provides you know so that power scales, that powershell is going to produce this t-sql script you can take that script come here paste it over this put your container put this value right here and it will already contain your shared access signature and then finally you know pay, paste the path to your 
um, container, right? The fully qualified path to that container here and run the script. Once you run this script, the extended event will be running. I'll show you just in a second. The final thing you need to do is go back over to that folder. If you go back over to that folder, you'll see number three, create the table value function. And this is the pivotal keys for part. <laughs> keys. This is the pivotal piece for Power BI. So you um, run that script. So you take a peek, you go over here and you run this. So once you run this, it actually creates that table value function. OK, so once that function is created, then I can use Power BI just to simply import it. I've already built this out for you. Use the template. So I'll show you show you that in a second. You don't have to do this yourself or unless you want to start from scratch. Do it yourself. Go, go do it yourself. All right. But once you run this, it creates it and then you're ready to go. So check this out. So I'm going to go over here to let me open up my object explorer and you can see right now the Mechum is running. So I, what I'm going to do, because I want to start from scratch, I'm going to stop the Mechum and then I'm going to start it. So I've started the Mechum up. If we go over to our block storage and we go to that particular container. So we're going to go to that container. Every time I stop and start that extended event, it creates a new trace file. OK, so I'm going to go into that folder and then what you're going to see is I'm going to have two event files. I'm just going to grab the latest one, right? I'm going to click it and what it's going to do is it's going to give me the full URL to that file. So just copy that onto your clipboard. Hang on to it. Remember, you're going to need this now. And so then once you open up that PBIT file, you'll get some prompts. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in that and then I'm going to put in my database name. And then I'm going to put in my database name. I'm going to click load. And then with just a few seconds, you'll see the the Mechum report load up. So here we go. It loads up. It's all blank right now because I'm not doing anything. So let me point out one thing in this table about in the uh, in the script. So let me point out one thing in the creation of the extended event. You'll notice that there's two where clauses. So I have one where clause, the one that I ran, right, that is actually filtering out, has a filter on it. Um, on the text of the SQL to only return tables, uh, queries that contain PBI underscore. That's because I want to filter out all the noise. There's some meta metadata scripts that run when you do refreshes in Power BI. I don't want to see any of that stuff for this demo. You you can just simply, if you want to, right, you can comment out this line and uncomment this line, and then it'll just return everything. Okay. All right. So once that's done, right, we'll go over to. Let's, I have a. A report that I created that's pointing to AdventureWorks DW. And I'm just going to go ahead and click refresh because I want to see what happens, right? So when I click refresh, three queries are going to run one for my sales table, one for my product table, and one for my sales territory table. Okay. So it's going to do that. It's refreshed. That should have been captured in my extended event. I click refresh. The Mechum is going to do its work, right? The Mechum is going to go out. There's three rows. Um, you can see three queries will run. Here's the average CPU and duration. If I want to see the one that took the longest, I can sort it up this way and I can see which query took the longest to run. It's pretty obvious the one that had the most number of rows. If I hover over it, I have a little report tool tip that gives you the full query. And if I click it, you can actually see the query over here to the right. Now, that was the first part of what the customer wanted to see. The second part was they wanted to see what happens if I do a refresh now or a schedule refresh. So what I did was I deployed that report out to Power BI and if I go ahead and now I have that data set and if I just schedule, if I just refresh, I'm just going to do a, a refresh now on it and let's go see how long. Let's watch. I love this little dashboard, this little uh, window here. It tells me if there's a refresh in progress and as soon as the refresh is done, it'll alert me and then all I need to do is go back to the Mechum report and let's click away um, and then click refresh. Give it a few seconds. Instead of three rows, you should see that it returns six rows now. There we go. And now it returns six rows. And you can see, you know, here's the queries that's coming from from the refresh that I did in the service. What, Patrick? And you're giving this away to us? Of course I am, right? Just download the zip file and give it a, you know, give it a go, give it a run. And what tell me what you think. Post your comments, your criticisms, whatever you think down below. All right. So how are you guys doing this today? I'm curious. Share it with me. Maybe it's better than what I've done. If so, maybe we can collaborate and do a video together. Right. Post your thoughts again, your criticisms in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting Guy in the Cube, you know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe. If you like my video, two thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.